Hi viewers, welcome back to Nursing Simplified. In today's class, we are going to discuss another topic, oligohydramnias. Already we have discussed about polyhydramnias and today we are going to talk about oligohydramnias. What is oligohydramnias? As the term says, oligo is decreased. When the amniotic fluid level is getting decreased, which is either 100 ml or less than 100 ml, you term it as oligohydramnias. We had already discussed amniotic fluids, like why amniotic fluid is required, everything we had already discussed in polyhydramnias. So, we will directly enter into oligohydramnias. So, why does this condition happen? That is the etiological factors why oligohydramnias are happening. So, the first cause is amniotic nodosum. Amnion nodosum is nothing but it is the decreased secretion of amniotic fluid. So, the secretion or the production of the amniotic fluid is only very less and because of that it leads to oligohydramnias. The next condition is renal agenesis. Renal agenesis is when the kidneys of the fetus are not functioning adequately, it does not secrete urine or otherwise the micturation is very less. So, it leads to oligohydramnias and then comes the intrauterine growth retardation. Actually, you can think oligohydramnias leads to intrauterine growth retardation or otherwise intrauterine growth retardation can also lead to oligohydramnias and then the placental insufficiency, whatever may be the cause, may be it is the decreased placental perfusion or otherwise may be there is an uh, inadequate nutrition for the mother, whatever it is the cause is causing something which is going to affect the amniotic secretion, like it is going to decrease the amniotic secretion, so which leads to placental insufficiency and then uniovular twins. So, when there is a condition of uniovular twins, what happens is like one there is an adequate secretion and the other is not having adequate secretion where there is like like one is producing more amount of uh, amniotic fluid and one is not producing adequate amount of fluid. So, that is also a cause in case of oligohydramnia and then comes post maturity. Already we have discussed post maturity that is like when the fetus is uh, nearing to term. So, that is like when the mother is getting del, uh, uh, ready for labor process at that time automatically the fluid level is going to come down. But when there is post maturity that is the date has already been completed. So, at that time what happens there will be a total suppression of amniotic fluid. So, at that time also it can land up with oligohydramnias. So, then let us discuss the effects. So, effects already we have seen all the conditions we have to describe the condition or the effects into two categories of maternal and the fetal effects. So, first we will discuss the maternal effects that is in the early pregnancy what happens. So, in early pregnancy there is amniotic adhesion as there is decreased amount of fluid what happens there is an adhesion that is you do not have adequate um, like uh, protection for the baby. So, what happens the fetal parts are getting adhered that is like it is getting attached with one another. So, what happens sometimes the uh, it may lead to deformities of the fetus. So, sometimes what happens webbed necks takes place, sometimes there is club foot, anything can happen the size of the skull may vary. So, any abnormalities can happen. Then we have pressure deformity. Pressure deformity is when the amniotic fluid secretion is very less. So, it causes decreased movement of the fetus. So, what happens when in case if the baby's uh, foot uh, is like this in a flexed position if the baby is lying down there is no adequate fluid what happens. So, the baby's foot like that only it remains and it grows like that. So, what happens it ends with club foot. So, all these type of abnormalities takes place when there is oligohydramnias. 
The next effect is pulmonary hypoplasia. So, what happens in pulmonary hypoplasia? When there is decreased amniotic fluid, there is decreased circulation to the pulmonary vessels of the baby. So, what happens? There is decreased lung formation. So, lung maturity does not take place properly when there is an oligohydramnia. And then comes the dry wrinkled skin. When there is no adequate fluids, what happens? It leads to dry, wrinkled and lethargic entire type of skin for the child. Okay. So, these are the early effects of oligohydramnias and when coming to the later effects, it leads to IUGR. Already we have discussed in the etiological area that is like when there is an oligohydramnia, it can lead to IUGR or when there is an IUGR, it can lead to oligohydramnia. So, now again here it is like when there is an oligohydramnia, there is decreased placental perfusion. So, due to inadequate placental perfusion, it causes intrauterine growth retardation or IUGR and then comes hypoxia. So, again already there is placental insufficiency which is leading to hypoxia. Then coming to MAS, MAS is nothing but meconium aspiration syndrome. When there is a decreased placental perfusion, there is hypoxia for the fetus. When there is hypoxia, it causes meconium to like me, the baby passes meconium in the uterus only. So, when the baby is passing meconium in the uterus and if it is going to aspirate that meconium, it causes meconium aspiration syndrome which is a major complication for the baby. So, that is all with the effects of oligohydramnias on the pregnancy area. So, then the diagnosis part. So, when we come to the diagnosis of oligohydramnias, we are going to diagnose with the size. So, size already we have discussed when the woman is pregnant, the size of the abdomen is going to correspond with the size of the uterus. See, in case if the mother is 32 weeks, it is going to resemble 32. But what happens in oligohydramnia? So, in case if the mother is 32 weeks, the fundal height is not going to be 32. It will be either 28 or 30, it will be decreased. So, it shows the baby is not adequately growing up or otherwise the uterus is not adequate. So, it happens. Okay. So, then comes to the movement. See, when there is an adequate amniotic fluid, already we have seen the baby is going to be happy with whatever the mother is producing. But when there is polyhydramnia, what is happening? There is lot of fluid, the baby is more happy, takes on lot of rotation. But when there is an oligohydramnia, the baby does not have adequate space for movement. So, what happens? The baby's movements are restricted. So, in whichever position the baby is lying down, the same position it is going to take up. So, what happens? There is decreased fetal movement. So, with that also you can go in for a diagnosis of oligohydramnia. What will be the complaint of the mother? The mother will say, my baby is not moving adequately. I cannot feel the movement of my baby. So, those will be the complaints which gives you a clue that she can have an oligohydramnia. And then coming to full of the fetus, this is the terminology we use in oligohydramnia. So, what it is full of fetus. So, when you just see the abdomen of the mother or otherwise when you feel, when you palpate the abdomen, what is happening? You are able to see the abdomen is full of fetus. Okay, you are not able to feel any vacant space because the fluid is very less. You are able to feel all the parts clearly and what happens? The baby, uh, the abdomen is going to be full of fetus. So, that is called as full of fetus sign which is very particular with oligohydramnias. Then coming to intrauterine growth retardation, already we said this is the major effect from the fetal area. So, there will be an intrauterine growth retardation. Again, it gives a clue that there may be an oligohydramnia. And then coming to ultrasonography. So, naturally, this is your evidence like where you will be ruling out for the amniotic fluid index, which is going to show, which is going to show very, very less amount of amniotic fluids, which is going to be less than 100 ml. Next, we will discuss about the 
complications of oligohydramnias. So, again we can divide the complications into two areas of maternal and fetal complications. See maternal complications are going to be very less when comparing to fetal complication. So, the maternal complication include prolonged labor. See when there is an oligohydramnia there is decreased inertia. What is inertia? Inertia is nothing but the pressure or the contraction or the force. Okay. So, this is going to be less when there is an oligohydramnia. So, what happens naturally the women will have prolonged labor and when there is a prolonged labor what happens again you have to go in for operative deliveries that is like vacuum, forceps or a caesarean session. So, anything can happen when there is a prolongation of labor process. So, when we come to the fetal side like already whatever we have discussed in the area of your etiology like similarly abortion happens. So, when there is a decreased placental perfusion in the early pregnancy it will lead to abortion. So, again in the later pregnancy it will lead to intrauterine growth retardation and then cord compression again already I have said the abdomen is going to be full of fetus. So, what happens the baby is lying down on the cord. So, the full pressure of the fetus is on the cord. So, it may lead to cord compression again it can cause decreased placental perfusion again it is going to be a cycle. So, either it can land up with abortion or intrauterine growth retardation or sometimes intrauterine death. And then coming to pulmonary hypoplasia already we have seen there is decreased lung maturity for the fetus and then deformities again either there may be a deformity with the skull, with the neck, with the like hands or foot anything can happen because of the compression of the fetal parts and then fetal distress. So, fetal distress again already we have discussed with your meconium aspiration syndrome that is like baby passing meconium inside the uterus and then causes increased fetal mortality rate. So, anything can happen sometimes what happens a amniotic band formation in the neck can cause the fetal death. So, intrauterine death can happen. So, the fe uh, fetal mortality rate is going to be high with oligohydramnias. So, then coming to the treatment modules. See treatment modules you do not have a major treatment schedule for oligohydramnias. Oligohydramnias sometimes like it is going to be a high risk a very high risk of uh, pregnancy and definitely it is going to affect the fetus a lot when comparing to polyhydramnias. But here what we can do. So, like already it has happened and like some way we have to save the mother and the fetus. So, we are going to see like how can we prolong the pregnancy or otherwise like how you have to terminate according to the condition of the mother and the size of the fetus again on the amount of the amniotic fluid. So, you have to go in for continuous monitoring of the mother. You have to teach the mother how she has to see for the growth of the fetus that is the size of the abdomen as well as you have to teach the mother how to go in for assessment of the fetal movement, how she can assess the fetal movement and then you have to see for the increased fluid intake. Tell the mother that her fluid intake can improve the oligohydramnia. So, that is like when she is taking adequate amount of fluid anyway it has to go in for circulation it has to reach the fetus it has to reach the placenta. So, what happens naturally the oligo uh, aminuria can be rectified and then intravenous fluid administration. So, when the fluid intake again it is not sufficient you have to go in for continuous intravenous fluid administration which can help in the improvement of amniotic fluid. And then comes the amnio infusion. What is amnio infusion? It is nothing but you put a needle into the amniotic cavity and you transfuse amniotic fluid. That is like you transfuse fluid directly into the amniotic sac so that it, it the volume remains. But after some time it will come down again like after one circulation is over it will come down. So, again and again you have to transfuse like in case if you rule out amni uh, like oligohydramnias in the later weeks that is around 32 weeks, 34 weeks like that. 
So, what you can do? You can prolong the labor like little more. So, what happens? Like 2 to 3 weeks you can prolong the labor and you can sustain the fetus so that she will have a normal baby. So, what you have to do is like you can go in for amnio infusion. So, where you can directly insert a needle and then you can transfuse fluid so that the fluid volume is maintained. And then coming to L arginine. So, this is the common drug of choice when you come to oligohydramnias. Okay. So, it is considered like it is a vasopressin group of drug and it is going to increase the amount of fluid in the body. So, uh, many researchers have have found that it is a very effective drug and they recommend in many hospitals that to improve the amniotic fluid level. Okay. So, with this we complete oligohydramnias where we have discussed the definition, the effects, the uh, etiological factors, say how to diagnose complication and the management of oligohydramnias. So, in case if you have doubts or any clarification kindly give your comments in the comment box. Take care, let us meet in the next class. Bye.